They say nerves are often thought of as negative, but if the event means enough to you, they're going to be inevitable. I actually get concerned if I don't have nerves, though the key is learning how to deal with them and then using them to your advantage. So in this video, I'm going to be addressing race day nerves and then giving you my top 10 hacks to deal with them. We feel nervous when our mind senses that something significant is about to happen, and then it sends signals to our body that trigger that fight or flight response. Right, let's take a look at the science in a little bit more detail. It's part of the autonomic nervous system. It's actually the sympathetic branch along with the adrenal cortisol system that regulate that fight or flight response. And this was essential for primitive man as when they sense danger, the mind would tell the body to redirect the blood away from some of the organs that don't require it, such as the stomach. Hence why you struggle to digest a meal when you're feeling nervous. As a result of the hormones that get released, you'll notice certain symptoms such as increased perspiration, which might present a sweaty palms. You can quite often feel generally hotter inside and you might notice your heart rate increasing. Some people actually describe it as feeling their heart pounding in their chest. You might feel nauseous and some people are even physically sick with nerves. Then there's the race day jitters or shakes that you can get and increased breathing. Or on the other end of the spectrum, you might be one of those people that finds that you start yawning and actually have that urge to sleep. But whatever the signs, it's all signals that your body is reacting to what your mind is telling it is coming up. These feelings can end up having negative connotations, but it's how we choose to label the nerves and what we associate them with. For example, an increased heart rate at the start of a race is a really positive thing as you need that increased blood flow and oxygen going to your muscles so that they're ready to work. And it's worth noting that everyone has different feelings and reactions to nerves, but importantly, it's how we deal with them that will actually affect our end performance. The key is learning how to embrace and then deal with these signs of nerves. And there are a huge variety of techniques. So let's get started. Before your race, you need to go through in your mind your routine for race day morning. So know your timings, for example, when your warm up is, when you're going to eat, what you're going to eat, who you might need to speak to before. If you follow this routine, this will help you feel more in control and as a result, more relaxed. Include in this a final course check, whether that's physically walking through transition or mentally going through each section of the course. This will help settle any doubts and give you that added confidence. You see a lot of athletes using a list, whether that's pen and paper or simply an app on their phone, but it's a great way to eliminate any doubt that you might have missed something out. And it can be purely an equipment list to make sure that you've put everything in your bag and then everything into transition, or it could be a more comprehensive list that gives you the exact actions you should be doing in those hours and minutes leading up to your race. Reading a book can be a great distraction technique. And actually a friend and fellow competitor of mine used to use this in between the disciplines in modern pentathlon to switch off. Meditation and deep breathing are another great way to just help remove yourself from that situation. And this can be really useful if, for example, the race start is postponed and you want to save that nervous energy and just switch off for a moment. But do make sure you allow yourself enough time to come back into the moment and mentally prepare for the race. Music is a common strategy to use in sport. It can help change your mood, it can calm you, it can get you in the zone, it can help with distraction. But you need to work out what it is exactly you want to get from your music and then develop a playlist to suit you. Prepare for the unplanned situations. So where you can have spare kit in your bag, for example, a spare pair of goggles and a hat, because there's nothing worse at the start of a race, your goggles snapping, and then having to borrow a pair that you've not worn before, or even worse, having to swim goggleless. And then go through your routine and think about alternative scenarios. For example, if the swim is canceled or if the race start is delayed, hopefully none of these things will happen, but if you've already thought about them, then you're gonna be able to adapt much quicker than your fellow competitors. Allow enough time. This relates back to having a race day plan and then sticking to it. But if you're anything like me, you'll still be surprised at how much longer things take on race day than they would in a normal situation. And there is nothing worse for pre-race nerves than being in a mad rush and a panic beforehand. It's easy to feed off the negative nerves from other competitors. When you see them stressing, it's bound to influence how you feel. So once you've sorted everything in transition, take yourself away to somewhere that's a little bit quieter where you can go through your warm up, through your mental preparation in your own time and space. 
if you are lucky enough to have your coach there with you on race day, then make sure you use them to your advantage. I used to go and speak to my coach just beforehand for a few words just to give me that added bit of confidence. But if you don't have a coach, you can use friends, supporters, family. But it might be a good idea to speak to them beforehand just so they know exactly how they can support you or what you might want to hear. This one might seem obvious, but it still surprises me how often you see people doing something for the first time on race day. So for example, don't try a new food that you've not had before or do a stretch that you wouldn't usually do in your training or wear a brand new item of clothing. Even if it is your first triathlon, just make sure you've planned and prepared with everything that you're going to use on the race day. As I've already said, nerves don't have to be negative. You need them in order to be able to perform at your best. So embrace them and allow yourself to get excited for your race. There is no right or wrong way to deal with nerves. It takes trial and error and plenty of practice to find out exactly what works for you. But do remember that it is actually your body's way of preparing you to perform. And I'd love to know what techniques you guys use, so let me know in the comments section below what works for you. And if you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, like, and hit the globe to subscribe to make sure you don't miss any more of our videos. If you want to see the one we've done on race day psychology, it's a video just here. And if you want some reminders of what to go through in your mind when you're looking at T2, Mark's done a video on how to perfect T2 just here.